Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose what hey! I want. Hey! Nani, nani. Boy, I'm watching Shogun. I'm all into the Japan. Hogun! <laughs> exactly. I love Shogun. I never saw Shogun. Why did I say that? I don't know. I'm just yes-anding. Well, it's a, it's an Asian Game of Thrones. Whoa. Wait, you forgot the cup. Oh, uh, he'll be I back. I the Starbucks cup. Oh, uh, you didn't mention that. Yeah, the big cup. I got the big Starbucks hey, cup. Stanley Cup. Chuck's going to get some uh, ice water. Get some I, water there. I'm going ice water with the lid. You're going... No lid, no ice. They hate that on the flight, by the way. Huh? You know, they go, uh, you want to... You wanna, you know, the cart goes by. What, do you want a water? I go, yeah, water. They go, ice. I go, nah. They go, damn. Really? Well, the ice c- takes up a lot of content, so they're uh. going to pour more. But in Europe, of course, as you know, you can't get ice. That's you ask true. for ice, they fucking smack in the face and call you a homo. Yeah, they hate ice over there. So do the Mexicans. Uh, um, <laughs> we're off. <laughs> Boy, we just had quite a powwow. Oh, good pow. Well, we had one of those ones, and I'm always suspicious of Chuck because uh, he's like, all right, let's roll. And he's like, what are you guys' deepest secrets? And yeah. I just went off on a couple of things. And, wow, uh, that was deep state. <laughs> and we were rolling. And so now I gotta, I gotta. Chuck's gonna be my best man at my second wedding. <laughs> well, the good news is uh, you gotta get, a, get him in the will. The good news is it wasn't ab- about us. It was a, it was a ancillary or satellite story. That's true. That's true. But uh, it's scary that it's filming, and that's why are you garbage? Those guys who shout out by the way, H Foley. I told you said one of the sweetest things about Tuesdays ooh, with ooh, stories. Ooh, ooh. Love the full. Check out Mindful Metal Jacket episode. This is my way of getting people to watch my stupid podcast. There you but go. Uh, boy, did he really open up about his love for Tuesdays with stories? Well, we got a good resume. It's like Stavros, Gillis, Foley, the other guy. I think Louis listened to five of them, and uh, and Kevin Ryan. Hey! he loved it. Louis listened to it before we knew him, which is wild. That's insanity. Which, I don't know if we can be overstated. We've mentioned it. We've alluded to it. But uh, I met Louis, and he was like, you do the podcast with Norman. Woo! And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, you guys are amazing together. That's a great oh, show. And that was when we had nothing going on. That's when we were really. Well, he always had his tits to the nose stone. Yes, yes, tits. He knows what's going on, and uh, which is how you have to be, which I get mad at myself. As I'm like, am I watching enough? But sometimes I'll dip into the cellar or stand. You got to dip. I take a look, and <clears throat> it yeah. stinks. There's a lot of manure down there, but every now and then you see a little a little gold nugget in the, in the hills. Well, I told you in Austin, I went into little boy or big man or fat ass, whatever it's called. Ah, uh, yeah, it's tough. Tiny dick, fat ass. We should start a comedy club. Let's Ooh. open a club and call it Tiny Dick and Fat Ass. Oh, God. I already know who I'm booking. I know the whole lineup. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, boy. But, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. So are we moving to Austin, or what are we doing? No, it's a one-trick pony. You're in, you're out. You, you can't eat ice cream every day, I always say. like, I went down there. We talked about it. Did five days. I, I was excited to get out. Yeah. You know, that mothership, it's Groundhog Day over there. It's a hell of a club, hell of a time. They got their infighting. They got their drama. You, you, you do the 6th Street 20 times, you, you want to kill yourself. Yeah, you got more options here. Maybe I'll go to New Jersey. I'm back to Jersey. All right, he's back to As long as you're not in Tacoma anymore. I like Tacoma. Well, you can't move to Tacoma. I can move to Tacoma. Hey, Taco and Ma. I never thought about that. Taco Ma. Taco I Ma. Think they have a shirt. Uh, it's a, this is like me when I came up with Missouri Loves Company, and I was like, this is huge. And then I went to a store, and the whole store was that. There's a T-shirt. has a little taco, and it says ma. Uh, and you go, taco ma. What the fuck's taco ma? There you go. So, But you're thinking in the right direction. You know my million-dollar T-shirt idea. Hit me. Well, I can't say it. We talked oh, about it. Because right. you got an invention. Your buddy had an invention. Don't you uh, remember? No. You got mental problems. I'm on no sleep. I'm, I'm out of sleeping pills, Jerry. So I, I've I've been up all night. Thank you. What about Tylenol PM? I love. I got to try it. I didn't have anything in the house. I'm taking all kinds of stuff. I'm taking birth control and blue chews. Just trying anything to knock the brain out. Thank you. Yeah, it's tough. I had it last night too. Same thing. It's just you lay down and you go. 
Oh, I forgot to post a reel. Oh, I got to get the thing. I got to do the YouTube. I got to talk to Jason Katz. I got to talk to Salacuse. I got to talk to Chuck. There's 48 camera people. Yes. I can't keep track. I know. We got quite an employee list, but uh, Chuck had a good word. Ruminating. Ruminating. You're ruminating, and it's horrible for you. And obsessing. I got to tell you, I'm thinking about getting on narcotics because I'm a mental case. I love narcotics. Because, um, Anonymous. I got some some problems that just, it, it's the, the AA and therapy, they've pushed me so far. I've come so far, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, I'm you not can only a, do so much. I, I'm done with hypochondria. I'm yes. done with panic disorder. Yes. I'm done with That's gay great. sex. But I still <laughs> got these uh, nice. clicks and ticks that I think are neurological. Sure, narcotics. Bring them on. Yeah, I'll give you some side pieces or whatever. Oh, you got some stuff? Well, when I do, I'm saying. Oh, okay, I'll okay. Crush them up and shove them in your ass. Well, I feel like the weirdo because I go to clubs now. Like, you need anything? What do you want? A veggie tray? You need a, a couple of uh, beers? I go bring on the Xanax. You know, get give me an oxycotton. I used to have a great Xanax prescription back oh, in the day, but uh, those are the days. What I used to love to put a Xanax in a Jaeger bomb and Ooh. just suck that back and <laughs> let them do as they please. Now that's a real problem right there. That's an addict. Well, I told you my that was one of my party tricks was taking Paxil and Xanax with alcohol because I would read the label and then down it with the alcohol and everyone would be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Bill Paxil. By uh, Bill Paxton. Lit. Overrated. Not great. Yeah, well, he had a couple of good runs, though. Good films. Some good films, but he... I think the films are great in spite of him often. Oh! I really do. I think when you really watch closely, it's not great. Really? He's very generic honky to me. Yeah. He's very just vanilla cracker. You watch A Simple Plan, you're like, he's getting outclassed by uh, Billy oh. Bob Thornton. Oh, my God. That's a great movie. They don't make movies like that anymore, which is a good story, good plot. Nobody explodes. There's no diversity. It's just in the snow and dead people. I know. That's the thing. You want those movies. I miss those movies. A cop is gay, and yes. so he's got to kill his father. Yes. Whatever. You know, Crash. Yeah. Remember that trash? That beat. Uh, beat everything. What? Uh, broke back. Oh, is that right? It beat Brokeback, and that was a big uh, to-do. I love Brokeback. I think everyone knows my feelings on Brokeback. Great That's film. one of the greats all time. Ang Lee. I, oh, very Ang Lee. Yes, Shogun. Uh, but anyways, what the fuck were we talking oh, about? Oh, man, we went all over, up, down, and side to side. Bill Paxton. What were we talking now about we right before go that? Back Medicine, Bill. Xanax. Paxil. Yes, Bill Paxil. <laughs> yes. And... Um, Fuck, I was going to say something about meds, but I was on Paxil before years ago, and you can't come. Ah. Uh, and I would try to tell women, I never realized it's sweet that women care about us coming. They they take it personal. They do. It's beyond care. It's it's almost a insecurity they have. Because I would have to say to women, like, just a heads up, I've had 48 beers and 17 Paxils, and I'm not going to come. Yeah. But blow me for a little while, and then you don't have to swallow jizz. It'd be nice. Now, if I was a homo and I hooked up with a man, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, great children's book. If I was a homo, <laughs> if I was a homo, I don't know if I can hammer. say homo anymore. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, from the '90s. Yeah, it's fabulous. <laughs> But if I was a, uh, you know, one of them. Queer. I would, uh, I think that's something different. Oh, Queer yeah. Queer is like, you wear a wig, but no, you're weird. that's drag. I think it's anybody in the LGBTQ plus whatever. But I'm why not is sure, because why is queer in there? It's a Q, yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah, queer, I think, is willing. I've looked this, I think we actually looked this up in the book. I think we're all in reruns. Queer eye. But queer, I think, is willing to try things. I think queer means you like trans. No, it says lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people are all identified with the word queer. Oh, okay. okay. Well, queer used to be mean. Now yeah. queer is up. Yeah. Then we don't usually go back and, like, the, the N-word's never going to come back. No. But I don't understand. That sounded like the word queer. No. <laughs> um, but if I were gay... And I was hooking up with a guy, and he said to me, hey, I'm on some drugs that al don't allow me to come, but I enjoy the sex. Sure. I'd be like, fantastic. It's I'll save me. a few calories. There you go. 
But I mean, women would get really bummed out, and then they would just be sucking me off, jerking yes. me off for like forty-five minutes, and I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm on narcotics. Right, right, it, yeah, it fucks with their head because you know, guys, all you hear is like, he came in two seconds, blah, 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 fucking amateur, pussy ass bitch. But if you don't come in two seconds, they're way more angry. Well, I did that as a bit, and the story I did a couple bits from this one story when I was in Hartford, Connecticut, back in probably oh eight, seven ish. Trying to think of when I didn't have a girlfriend. Yeah, 08, maybe it was 09. And I hooked up with this woman, and I've told the story before, but it was at City Steam, and she was a real tough, firecracker, mm. dark-haired lady. Mm. And she was older than me, and she was like, you coming to my house? And then she was in like a Mustang doing 120, yeah. listening to, you're a crazy bitch, but you fuck so good you're on top of it. Oh, yeah. And she fucked me on top, and she was like, you fucking nerd. Yeah, you like that, you little fucking nerd. <laughs> And I was, it was hurtful, and sure. then I was like, I, I can't come, I don't come. And she's like, oh, you're going to fucking come. And then she was sucking me up, and she's like, if you don't come, I'm going to be pissed. Right. And I was like, I, I, this is too much. It's a personal challenge. Then you get in your head about coming, and then you can't do it. And now it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Exactly, and I never came. Then she drove me back angrily. And yeah. we were still listening to Crazy Bitch. Imagine we did that. If every girl I didn't make come was... Uh... <laughs> I would kill myself by now. No, I've never made a girl come. I mean, I'm all, I said it before, I'm all vibrator. Take that vibrator, do your thing, I'll be over here, and let me know when you're finished. It's man's best friend. Fuck a canine. Get that vibrator in there, because uh, that thing, oh, and I think a lot of guys are like, because I've been trying to watch less porn, uh-huh. so I save it all up for the lady, and I really ravish that whore. Yeah. And then uh, I couldn't come for a while, I don't know why, and I was I was losing my mind. I became crazy, and I was like, maybe this is why a lot of guys think women are nuts. Maybe they're not getting off. Right. I think I got something there. And That's not bad. So some guys are like, my lady's got a vibrator. Can you believe that shit? I'm like, you better be damn glad she's got a vibrator. She would kill your ass. No, I love the vibrator, and I love eating pussy, but... You go down there, it takes 25 minutes, You cl- and then you don't know the part. You don't know what's going on. And a cock is just easier. That's why I like blowing men, because it just, yes. it's just up and down, up and down. It's but a blunt instrument. The, the clit's all wonky-wacky. I know, and then you got to go hard, and she's like, fake me out a little bit. I'm like, fake you out? So you got to fr- pretend uh, to lick parts, and then pull back, and then she gets all teased. I don't want to be teased. Don't tease my dick. No tease. Just I never got the tease. Get in there. Yeah. Golf tease. I, I don't get it. Gay nine. I thought of that a while ago. Ah, I like that. I a like gay it. nine. He's That's a like gay nine. Mateo. He's pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Although he may be a 10. I don't know. Yeah. But any farts, use the vibrator. There's no harm in it. I, I, I like a dildo, too. Get a dildo and a vibrator. and Dildo I don't care for as much. It feels a little primitive. I'm just yank, I'm just shoving some tube in there. I don't know. Well, you put your tube in a different spot. That's my job. I'll tube. But you tube one spot and you dildo the other spot. Now you got a whole threesome going. Butt stuff? What well, are you talking the about? Mouth. The mouth and pussy. Fill them up. Wait, you put a dildo in her mouth? I'm not saying that's what I do. I'm just oh. saying you could do that. All or right, vice all versa. Right. Dildo puss, dick mouth. Okay. Or dick butt, dildo pussy. You ever do the thing where you, this is getting graphic. Dick butt, dildo pussy. Great <laughs> linebacker for the Bears. <laughs> dildo pussy. I think he's Ukrainian. You ever do the thing where you go down on, this is getting graphic, but you go down on her hardcore, your face is all wet, then you make out? Oh, my God. That's my number one favorite thing. Yeah, it's a hot one. Are you kidding? It's the same right after they gargle your jizz and they make out with you and snowball you. That's the other one I love. What? Yachi, watchy, hachi. Cut that. Take that out. Take that out. I can't have that well, in that there. YouTube's just kicked us out. We're on 4chan now. No. Well, we haven't made a dollar off YouTube. Can someone figure this out? Please. Come on, Chuck. We're cut off. We're, we're, we're denied. We have a YouTube contact. We just don't have it. We're not in. Yeah, I got I got through to someone uh, through the Patreon that's on the Patreon. Really nice person, and they have a spouse that works at YouTube. And they said they a had spouse. To, we can't use a spouse. Well, they said mm. we we did a man. They reevaluated your content oh, after boy. Shelby disconnected oh, the God. AdSense, which yeah. is not not his fault. He didn't mean to do that. He just wanted to switch over. Yeah, I the bet account. he wrote him a mean note. Uh, but no, no, he just he just he's just like, oh, I'm not gonna you know like put it in your own pocket. The money that's coming in, so yeah. he didn't have to send us money. But when we did that, it made us go back to unmonetize. So they had to re-review our content. Oh, bad review. And within the new like, review. YouTube yeah. thing, they're just like, this is too much. Well, I said cunt 38 minutes into a special, and they uh, demonetized. Yes, We're talking right. about eating dirty asshole. Yes. Yeah, yeah well, you, you see a Fahim? No, what happened to Fahim? Oh, he's stuck at 70 views. It, it won't budge. 70? 70? 
It, this thing's been 70, out a month. Seventy thousand. Sorry, sorry, seventy thousand. Okay. But still, I mean, he hasn't even cracked a hundo, and he, and it's a killer spesh. Well, now I think things have changed. I but Louis Katz just hit a million. Yeah, that's good. So that's something. But I don't know. I mean, is it because it's dirty or just just too many? I think he said. Ten minutes in, something something went down. Mm. So he's uh, he's in the doghouse. No, he's the best. By the way, a slew of specials just came out. Fahim, <laughs> Fahim, Dan St. Germain, Sean Donnelly, Greg, Greg Stone, Stone, Brian Simpson. Well, Brian Simpson. Attell is next week. Hannah wow. Gadsby had a slew of stuff. Sam I, I, just shot his. There's like 20 this month. No joke. I just saw a list come out of all the specials coming out this month. It's literally like 20. Wow. Well, they say uh, they're doing one a week on Netflix. Plus all the YouTube, plus the uh, Hulus and the Amazons and the Anals and the Queefs, so it's it's adding up. Yeah, what the fuck do you do? I yeah, don't know. It's hard to stand out. Well, Soder had one. Oh, Soder's was just a couple weeks ago. Killer. It feels like a month ago, but I it know. was like two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, a lot of sharing. Hey, can you share this? Can you share that? I know. It's a lot. And then also, we're talking to this guy, Danny Frankel, our boy at Punch Up. Go hit Punch Up. And he's like, you got to make your Insta story. You can only have three Insta stories a day. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, no one looks at them. And then I got four people a day going, can you put this in your Insta story? Good point. So where the fuck am I? Good point. It's not easy. Storybook. Enough's enough. Um, but. But any, by the way, Frankel was like, Norman's a, he's a piece of shit. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. I'm an idiot. He's like, uh, I'm like, he's selling out two beacons. He's like, he should be doing three gardens. I don't know. That's crazy. Well, that's what he said. He said, you're a moron, and uh, he doesn't care for you as a person. <laughs> Thank you, Frankel. I'll remember that. I'm going to make four stories on Instagram, just to spite you. Uh, four stories, and seven years ago, yes. our fathers came upon this nation to suck their own dick. Four floors of whores. By the way, my buddy's been there. Or my buddy's what? been to Thailand. He didn't go in there, of course. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! He's a married man. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Uh, my buddy's been in that area. He walked wow. by it. Do yeah. we need four? I mean, the f- ground floor, I'm good. Yeah. You, know, you go in, you plow a couple of Thai women or lady boys. Do you need to go to the second floor? I don't know. Well, you got a lot of different whores. I mean, what I if guess. it's fat, then skinny, uh, then true. whatever? I imagine it gets skinnier because I got to get the, hit the stairs. Now, let me ask you this. Your wife says to you, Mark... You've had a good run. I'm excited about all the money. Thanks for the house. What a time we've lived nice. in. That's all I want every day. <laughs> she says, why don't you go out, have yourself a nice time. I'm going to fly you to Thailand with Ooh-wee. my money. Go to Four Floors of Whores and fuck yourself a bitch and come on back. Just I don't want to hear about it, but have a good time. What, what, this is, what, what is this, my wedding gift? <laughs> this is great. I- so she says that. What are you going to get? Are you getting skinny? Are you getting fat? Are you uh, getting a kid? Are you getting an old lady? Asian? Ooh. Black? Well, I think you got to run the gamut. You got to get all the variety in. You no, gotta... no, 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 no. You get one. Oh, you get one. You get one. That's the deal. Oh, geez. You get one boy or girl, whatever. Well, I think you spend a lot of money, which in Thailand you spend about $19, and you get the, the Queen of Sheba. You go top shelf. So uh, you got to you gotta go top shelf. You got to go. You can go bang a Lady Godiva up there. Well, that's what I'm saying. So what? what's your prep? Because I'm extremely attracted to my I do a joke with them. My wife is exactly the kind of gal I want. How great is that? Petite, blonde, the t- everything. I don't want to get too graphic here, out of respect, but she's what I'm into. Wheelchair, yeah, vagina dentata, the whole package. But you get a one freebie, go have fun. I wouldn't go to Thailand. You go, no, you got to. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, four, does Four Floors of Horse only have Thai women? Or no, does it have I everything? assume there's a, it's a variety I over guess you there. can go to any prostitution house. I think they have DEI over there. you got to get a little everything. Black, <laughs> white, gay, men, women, lady, boy, uh, handicapped, fat as shit. I bet fat over there is big. So what do you think? Because, I, you know, I want, I'm into what my wife is, and so anything different would be nice, even if it looked similar. Mm. But then you're like, I only get one. Maybe I want a fat black guy with a shaved head. No, what girl? Fuck. <laughs> well, the beauty is, uh, the beauty is, you think, you know, it's like a meal where you go, I'm fucking starving. I'm gonna go to this restaurant. I'm gonna order the the duck. I'm getting the goose. I'm getting the chicken. I'm getting cake. I'm getting ice cream. And then you have two slices of pizza, and you're like, I'm good. Yeah, you're That's full. That's the thing about four floors of horrors. That's what I'm saying. You go in there, you're like, whoa. 
I'm putting all this in my ass. And then you get one hand job, and you're like, I gotta get back to the hotel. Of course. Well, once you come, every thought you've ever had just goes away. Exactly. The moment I come, first of all, I'm filled with gratitude. Well, sometimes shame, depending on what happened to get me to come. Big shame. I'm an all, all shame all the time. What is the shame? I don't Shane get it. Gillis. I think that's the Puritan Irish uh, biblical shit that's pumped right into our dickle. I think so. It's I, I literally have missionary sex with my wife, and then right after, I'm like, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, didn't piece I know, of shit. I know. It's bad. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. In the middle of it, I'm like, pretend you're sucking my father's ass. Sure. So that part's like, ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But you, you got to go. I always say when you're horny, you're like temporarily insane. You go crazy. You should be able to use that in court, by the way. Yeah. Hey, you said you'd uh, give her a car. Well, I was getting head. I was, you know, I got to plead horny here. Of course. Yeah, I think that's a good point. But yeah, so I, I do think uh, it's just gross. You're both naked. You're sweaty. Your little dick is shriveled now. She's got fucking baby batter on her neck. The whole thing is, uh, it's it's naughty. So what are you going? Are you going blonde, skinny, fat? I think you gotta go. I gotta go full tie, like all in. Get mm. the chopsticks and the noodle. I mean, you gotta go tie, baby. Tie one on. Tie goes the runner. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. tiebreaker. My foot. I had the thing burned off more yesterday. Oh it's man, killing me. It goes from mouth to foot to teeth. Like I feel like you gotta. You pick a part of your body and you really fuck it up. Well, it's bad news. Bears over here. They're burning the shit out of this thing and. Uh, the first couple days after the burn, it's bad. I got a third degree burn in my ass. Woo! Foot. Weird to go in and get a third degree. You paid for a third degree. I know. It almost feels sexual. I was saying that to Sarah. Mm. It's like S and M. S and M. S and L. What is it yeah. called? Yeah, S and M. Sadist, ma- masochist. Because she's hot. I told you this doctor is like gorgeous, and yeah. she's just burning my foot, and I'm like, oh, 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 right. oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of. I wish I was into pain. I know that must be nice. Those guys who like getting their balls stomped on or a stiletto up the ass. I don't get it. Yeah, shove a nail through my dick. That would be fun. But I, I don't have a wife that's gonna ever beat my testicles in. <laughs> she's nah, just you not. She's that. like, what are you talking about? Yeah, well, that's got to be weird, too, when you get into a, a fist fight. Let's say your wife throws a plate at you and it hits your head, and you're like, hey, that was hot. Do that again, will you? It's got to be kind of convenient. Yeah, I guess so. It'd be nice. She steps on your foot. You're like, ooh, hello. Well, I got the big MILF thing going on. This is not, I didn't know how oh, into MILFs I was. She's yeah, pushing the baby carriage, holding the baby. She's crying. She's playing like, doo, 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 doo. and then you got her fucking ankles over her shoulders. Whoa, and well, there's something naughty. They got the little baby in the next room all uh, is ready to party, and you got you taking his wa- his mom and really railing her. It's all I've ever wanted. I didn't realize before. Well, I always say, you know, I like to milk before because the essence of sex. This is what I've talked about before, and I've said it many times. The thing that's attractive about sex to me is that you're seeing this person right. in a totally different light. Yes, Especially yes. If, that's why they're, they're like a school teacher. It's extra exciting. Sure. Or a librarian. They're just kind of like, oh, hello, hi, I just what I was going to do this thing. And then you're seeing them like, yeah, that's right, you fucking right. piece of shit. I'm a pig. That's interesting. It might be why women are less turned on all day long than men because we're already talking about our dicks and fucking and oh she's got a hot ass and uh, we're we're a little more loosey-goosey with the sexual talk whereas women are a little more proper and uh concealed i think so i think that's right and so then when you get a, a kid it cranks it up even more because they're so good to your kid right. you're like oh my god this is so hot yeah yeah you know what is hot too and uh you ever, i don't know if sarah seems like a nice lady she's a woman of the cloth but my lady will be like <laughs> Well, we get all. I fucking need it. I need to get blasted. I need to get railed. I need to get just sh- sh- Vince McMahon shit on my chest. Like you gotta put my head through a wall. Yeah, no, I I, I got a whole bit about this. I I think she has that, but she doesn't vocalize. She doesn't. Ah. Uh, she's not a vocal person. So there's never like it's always. I mean, I do this in my she's act. Not vocal. But she's like, this, all right. No sex. During the sex, she's hey, hey, great, okay. I'm coming. Okay. I don't want to get too crazy here. Okay. I think her brother listens to this, but you know, <laughs> she's she's never like, get over here and fill me up, you little pussy. Right. right. I would like that. Yeah, yeah. My gal's almost too much of that. Where you're like, all right, all right, I'm I'm gonna start crying. Too here. much. What are you, are you uh, complaining like, about that? Come on, you fucking homo piece of shit. She's basically doing the pod. She's like, uh, you call that a dick, you fucking loser, your mom's ugly. I'm like, all right, all right. That's what I need in my life. That's a it can go over the line. All right. Well, I'd like to see over the line. I'm All not right. even close to a line. Yeah. Hey, what do you really need to work out? Your lucky sweatband? 
your old college water bottle, the thing that you need is FitBot. The FitBot app is like having a personal trainer in your pocket. It creates custom workouts based on your goals, your experiences, and your available equipment. No matter where you are or what equipment you have, FitBot will create a custom workout that will get you to your best body ever. Dude, this thing is awesome. I, I, I love it. It kicks ass. It's a great app. It's, it's try, I'm trying to get fit myself. I just had a kid. I put on some baby weight. I'm gross. FitBod's amazing technology studies your past workout tra- yikes, tracks muscle fatigue and recovery and designs a well-balanced workout plan just for you. With over 1,000 demo videos, you'll learn how to do movements the right way, and you can even track your personal best with FitBod's progress charts. It has never been easier to get the results you've always wanted. Check out FitBod. Get 25% off your prescription subscription <laughs> at FitBod.com. M-E slash Tuesdays. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Tuesdays. Go do it now. Get in the best shape of your life. Hey, folks, this episode is brought to you by our good buddy, our number one fan, Robert Patton, inventor of sheath underwear, owner, creator, whatever word you use. He spent enough of his life with sweaty ball mess, and so he decided Enough with the sweaty ball mess and designed the best underwear I've ever worn. You know I'm wearing them right now. I have them on. They're underneath my pants. They're underpants. Sheath underwear is unlike anything else. It comes with two pouches. Put your dick in one pouch, your ball sack in the other. Keeps everything separated so things don't get stuck together and turn into a big, hot, sweaty mess. Literally the best underwear I've ever worn in my whole life. I wear them, Mark wears them, every comic I know wears them, every cool guy wears them. I stuff them in my wife's mouth when we're banging. These are the best panties I've ever had. Seriously, go buy a pair, buy a set, support sheath underwear. They're always supporting us. This guy's a real-life fan. He's an Army veteran, Iraq vet, and the underwear fucking kick ass. I wouldn't tell you to get them if I didn't think that. Actually, I would, but I do actually think this one is great. With an added bonus of making your package look awesome, you truly can't go wrong. You can even build your own underwear bundle on their website to make sure you have a pair for every day of the week. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code TWOSGAYS to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TWOSGAYS. Call Sheath Underwear, support the show, support your balls. All right, well, uh, let me let me throw this in your... Uh wang and see if it makes you shriveled all right uh did arizona this Woo! weekend we love arizona i love arizona dry heat flat q on open carry fun time camelback yes camel toe so uh i fly we're doing tucson friday phoenix saturday nice nice but i think we should have flip-flopped it it should have been mm. Tucson Saturday because flying into Tucson is a real cum guzzler. You got to connect, yes. as David Tell says, the connecting flights tour. You know, you're you're gonna connect, so you got to leave early because it's West Coast and you lose hours. Right. So, getting to uh, Tucson was a bitch because I fucking you know me, I'm a space cadet, chooch. Yeah. Double middle seat. I fucked up. I don't understand. I didn't. I, I don't you know, get it. I got a guy who books my shit. I, I show fire up Fire him. I should fire him. I go, what fire are you doing middle man. seats? And he was like, oh, sorry. I, that was all they had. And I'm like, it's not all they had because I'm looking at it. And I I, I could have gotten another one. But, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to be an ass here. But you're outrageously successful. You're no longer living a life of that's all they had. I well, you he can get it. whatever you fucking want. He booked. That's I, the benefit of succeeding. I had faith in him. I didn't. I didn't look. I didn't check. Okay, and all right. Keep going. Sorry, I'm going. I want a man. I think I want to be a manager. I talk to people. I would I'm love like, I think I can be a manager. You. I advocate for people. I see all the things because this is the thing. If you want to be a man, if once you're a comedian for 25 years, you know how to manage. That's true. I'll take over this operation. Please, I'll give you eight percent. All right, eight. Well, we're friends. Can I get a free poster? Yes, I'll sign it. Okay, so double right. middle. So double middle, you fly to Atlanta middle, you fly to Tucson from Atlanta middle, and, you know, you oh. got the fat guys on both sides. I'm a fucking <laughs> twink sandwich in the middle here. And uh, Title. 
Yeah, so I'm a Twinkie. So uh, brutal, brutal. And, you know, you try to nap. You don't nap. You finally get to Tucson. You go right to the hotel. You do two, You do a show. You're like, oh, and you go, we had a couple drinks being Caleb signing. I go, I am going to bed. We're driving to Phoenix tomorrow, which is a treat. Yes. You, it's like an hour and a half ride. Thank God. So I, that's something. I did this with Louie. We did Phoenix, Tucson. We drove. And we had the time of our lives. It's a great time. It's a, it's a roadrunner country out there. It's exactly. Just a couple of cacti and some hill. Beep, beep. Brrr, and you, you know. can really fly. You can be like a buck ten out there. It's Arizona. They don't give a fuck. They're free. They're wild. So... Uh, uh, you know, we do the show. Show is great. Tucson, those little towns are hot, you know. I don't know if it's a little town, but, you know, it's not Phoenix. You got the school there. Oh, they got a school? College town. Ah. That's U of A. There you go. The Wildcats. Ah, yes. School Speed. shooting. So, I go, I'm going to bed tonight. Now, I zip open my little travel bag. Dob kit, some people call it. Have you heard that? No. Oh, give that a go. I think that's a term, Dob kit. I don't know what it means. Might be military. Sounds fun. So I open my little travel bag, got your toothbrush, your razor, your dental floss, your anal, whatever cream. And I go, you got it? Yeah, it's a DOP kit. D-O-P-P kit. Oh, P. And it says it originated in Germany when Charles Doppelt began producing a new type of toiletry bag in 1926. There you go. DOP kit. How about that? Duck a shame. Ah, all right. So I go, uh, let me open my little sleeping pill and take a, I usually take a halfie. Tonight yep. I'm taking a full because I want to get some fucking shut eye. I know the feeling. Yes. So you know you're half in the bag. You're like, oh, I'm gonna have a nice drunk snooze. No pill. I'm uh, out. Fresh out. I know that feeling. It's the worst feeling. It's the worst. So you do. The, you really get sad in there. You're you're licking the inside. I, I put some water in the pill jar. Maybe I can <laughs> shake some stuff out. You look like a real psycho. And I'm drunk. My dick's out. You end up rubbing one out. So. I'm like, damn it. So I take a half an edible, and then I go, oh, I find a pill loose in my bag. Okay. And I go, hey, I'm back, baby. We're going to sleep. Pop that pill. Go to bed. It's like 1.32 in the morning. I wake up at about 3. I'm racing. I'm like, woo, baby, I'm on the wall. I'm, I'm like, holy shit, I'm on the moon. It was an Adderall. Oh, I my went from Christ. no sleep, needing sleep, to supercharged. I haven't taken an Adderall in, in who knows how long, so it fucking hit me like a ton of bricks. I was oh, like boy. fucking Robin Williams doing a comedy special. I was like, hello. I was doing fucking shows in, my, in the bed. I had a spoon. <laughs> I was dancing. I was painting. I had a glass of wine like a Frenchman. It was brutal. I stayed up the whole night. Yeah, that's that's the worst feeling ever in the world because it's the whole time your brain is going, hey, because you're like, this is the opposite of what I need. Exactly the opposite. Yes, I've had it sans the Adderall since the baby's been born uh-huh. because you're like, he's going to wake up at four. I know it. I, I need this sleep. You I have a it. show. I have to travel. The yes. more you need it, it's like everything in life. When you try to float, you sink. When you try to sink, you float. The boner the boner method. You, you, you're so worried about not getting one, you don't get one. Right, exactly. I had this one time with a Claritin, much lesser degree, but Claritin D. That's got some amphetamine. It was a Claritin D24. And it sent me on a fucking like two week long, uh, what's it called? Insomnia. Yes. I was in Chicago at Zany's in the condo. I took a Claritin D24. I couldn't figure out why I was up all night. Yeah. And then even when I realized, oh, it's because of the drugs, I still, the next night, it was so jarring yes. that I couldn't sleep for like a week and a half. Here, here. Now, are you better now-ish? No, I'm, ah. I'm all, it, 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 sh- it shuts you off course. You know, you're like a ship that just started going left, and before you know it, you're like, oh, I'm in fucking Zimbabwe, and I'm getting a spear thrown at me. Oh, jeez. So, uh, you know, you got that thing, too, where you're like, okay, it's four. Okay, it's five. Okay, mm-hmm. maybe if I go to bed now. Okay, it's six, it's seven now. Cheep, cheep, cheep. You hear the birds chirping. You see that sun crack through the, the 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 curtain, and you're like, God damn it! And you just can't fall asleep. And before you know it, eh, eh, 10 a.m. Just been laying there, just like this. Like I'll beat it. I'll beat the Adderall. I, I can sleep through it. Nothing. So then you go downstairs. The sun is shining. Everybody's having their coffee. They're laughing with their eggs, and you just go, Ah! You don't know what it's like. And then you get in the car, and they're like, "Woo, boy, did I sleep like a baby. Yeehaw. And you're like, you're cracked out. You're zombied. Your head hurts. Your ears are full. Your nose is running. The worst feeling. It is the worst feeling, and I've dealt with it a few times recently. And it is. It's that thing of, like, let me count 
sheep. Yes. Okay. Sometimes I'll be like this. I'm going to play a baseball game in my head. Yes. Yes. And I'm yes. like, here's the pitch. And then I'm like, it's the fourth inning. I'm still right, going. Right. Or count backwards from a thousand. I tried count, it. All kinds of bullshit like that. It just doesn't work it because doesn't work. there's another piece of your brain. This is why psychology is like so fascinating. There's yeah. a little piece of your brain doing the thing of like not falling asleep. And then you feel like, have I ever fallen asleep? Yes. How do you How fall did asleep? I, do before? I can't remember. And the, the, the answer is you weren't thinking about it. You weren't it. thinking about it. And You're that's right. the, the essence of OCD and anxiety and panic disorder. It's like you can't stop thinking about the thing. It's physically impossible to stop thinking. Try it's, it right now. It's fucking horrible. You're thinking about not thinking. Right. And then we're thinking about how there's no one talking, how it's a show, and you got to, you know, so it, it is brutal, and then you're like, okay. You think that's thinking, you better think again. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're thinking. So then you start going, okay, we have two shows tonight. They're sold out. We're at this fucking beautiful theater, and I'm on no sleep. I'm a shitty guy because I got to deliver. These people are tweeting at me, hey, getting excited for the show. And you're like, God, I just want to go to bed and curl up and shoot myself in the temple. Right. But you got to push through. And so I said, all right, fuck this. I'm not letting them win. I went to CVS when we got to Phoenix. I bought a bottle of NyQuil. Okay. And I just chugged the fucking thing. <laughs> Come on. I, I chugged half of it. And I go, all right, that's it. I close the curtain. I mean, it's like 1230 in the day. The sun is shining. It's Phoenix sun coming in at me, you know? And I'm just like... That's it. I'm not going to let this thing beat me. I'm going to push through. I chug half the bottle. I lay there. I fall asleep. Okay. I fall asleep for like eight minutes. <laughs> I wake up. My stomach's going... Because you can't just shove NyQuil up your ass and, and think you're going to be okay. No. I shit out a black fudge that would have stopped a Flint, Michigan person. I mean, it was horrific. Oh, boy. And, you know, so now you're like, oh, you got that weird nap, you're shitting black foam, and uh, that was it. I just, so I started drinking to kind of get right. Did two shows, we pulled it out, and I'm sweating, my eyes are burning, you know, you got the, yeah, so, uh, whoo, how about how about Hunter Biden, you know, whatever. <laughs> Trying to do a Q and A, people were like, "Talk about," uh, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, "Yeah, that's crazy. What else you got?" Yeah, it was uh, brutal. You do the meet and greet, people are looking at you. You're like, "Yeah, brutal." But we pushed through, and uh, this guy goes, "Hey, childhood friend," goes, "I'm coming to your show. You need anything?" I go, "This is gonna sound weird. I haven't talked to you in 20 years. Could you bring a Xanax?" He goes, "I got you." Saw him backstage. We shook hands. He gives me the Xanax. I pop that puppy immediately when I get off stage. Went to bed. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh it's it's the worst feeling in the world when you can't sleep. And but the thing to remember is that you can go, well, have I ever, what am I gonna do? Fall asleep on stage? Sure. You're like, I can get through this. And my therapist, our therapist, helped me with this a long time ago because I was like, I can't sleep, I'm losing my mind, I'm fucking crazy. Yes. And he's like, When's the last time you were just in an asylum because you couldn't sleep for a few days? Mm. Like, what do you think is going to happen to you? Yeah. You'll just be tired. Ah, yeah, but it does. It sucks, and it's mentally draining. Like you, you go to weird places, you you turn into a psycho. It sucks, but it helps to remind. Like, cause I'm like, I'm gonna die. I can't yeah, sleep. I have right. a thing. I have a shot. But you're like, you can go a day without sleeping. And I think about this like when I was drinking, I would stay up till eight in the morning all the time. All the time. It Same. wouldn't even. I wouldn't even think it. Like I'm like and. I've got through that. Yeah, yeah. And then you start thinking about guys who work in a mill or guys who, who fly jets or whatever, like people with real jobs. We're right. up there going, hey, what's up with cereal? These exactly. guys are, are working cranks and levers like on an oil rig. No, people, probably... some people have five babies. That now having too. a child, I'm like, yeah, like people have like a, a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old, and then they roof houses. Yes, yes. And then they come home, and you're like, that, you get it. You're like, yeah, get drunk and beat the shit out of them. Who gives a of fuck? Of course. What else can I do? So Sorry, lady. You're getting hit. But I have that. Last night, Sarah had spots. She did your show. at uh, Killed, by the way. Nice. She's very funny. Yes. So she came home at like 1.30, so I'm like sleeping in bed with the baby, but like she's not home. So I know she's going to come home at some moment. Mm. And so you're not quite sleeping because you're like, is that her? Is this her? It's a late you, show. You don't have the like lights off. Everyone's home. We're good. So you're like half sleeping. So she gets home at 1.30, and then she, we're chatting about our day. And we're talking, oh, my God, he's so cute. Blah, blah, blah. What would you yep. do? I, I did this. I fed him at this time. And then all of a sudden, you're like, it's 2. I'm like, I have a podcast tomorrow. I'm shooting a fucking That's film exactly tomorrow. It. And then you're like, 
yeah, all right, so I'll just do the podcast. I know. Like, what's going to happen? I'm gonna, you're going to be podcasting, and I'm like, <sighs> right, right. You get the energy up. You do it. That's true. It's not pleasant. Yes. But whatever. And then I think when we had the baby, we didn't sleep for 29 hours. I know. And you just, you just do it. You just do it, yeah, and we're doing it right now, and and nobody wants to hear about the bitching either, so I'm, I'm sorry for bitching. You know, you get in the car, and you're like, I didn't sleep at all. They're like, oh, that sucks. So, how about uh, poor things? And you're like, no, oh, I wanted you guys to care a little, but, you right. know, that's just, I wouldn't care about, you know, you, you know how it goes. Yeah, of course. But, yeah, we're back. We did it, and now I'm my, my uh, equilibrium's off, my schedule's off, so I'm, I'm on no sleep again, but we're going to... We're gonna be fine. We're gonna push through. I'm not gonna fall asleep and walk into a manhole. Yeah, you rely. You, you, you hang out, and then eventually, eventually, you do fall asleep. Eventually, which you is do. You have nice to, to know, and uh, yeah, it's also hard just because our brains are so fucked. Because there's just so much information we're taking in all the time. Yeah, and you get attacked. Oh, I have the podcast tomorrow, and you're trying to keep track of your schedule and all the shit. And you're like, okay, we got a podcast at noon, and then I got that coming at two, and then I got to do that, and I'm like, I should have done that, and then. For me, it's like all my shortcomings are just right, circling right. through my head all day long. Totally. Not to mention now, everyone has access to you. So people just write to you and you're like, boy, you didn't do this on the thing. Oh. You forgot to say this. But you fucking, what about this? Yeah, I know. Jason Katz has texted me. I think about coming to L.A. Do you guys need a, a filmer for the comedy store? May 5th, by the way. May, May 6th? May 5th. Fifth, yeah. Right fifth. Comedy Store Main Room, live pod, 4 p.m. But he's like, you need a guy? Oh, man, I did Sam's special. Oh, man, it was so fun. And I, I'm just seeing these bubbles coming in, and I'm like, get the fuck away from me! Stop texting me! Ah! I want to just throw your phone at your wife's face. But, uh, you know, you got you to gotta relax. Well, that's what's hard, too. And, you, and you, you're like me, I think. It's like you see those unread texts, and oh. it's, like, it's like a fucking flashing bulb of, like, Totally. And sometimes someone will send me a screenshot. Uh, someone recently sent me a screenshot. I'm not going to say who, because people are all up in arms about me mentioning this person, mm. but they had <laughs> 425 unread texts. That's kooky. Not emails. Kooky. Texts. How do you live like that? I could, your son is drowning. I missed it. I, I'm like, 425? And it's always awkward, too, because you're like, look at this thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, because I'm just noticing this thing. Of course, that red circle with the number in it. It's That's too much. insane to me. Insane. I don't know how people live like that. So I'll wrap this up with this. We do Phoenix, killer. The second show is lights out. Do the do a meet and greet, whatever. Now tell me where you're at on this. You know I will. You got the guys, the grips, the the floor manager, whatever you call it at a theater. These these people who work there, the sure. staff. The stagehands. Thank you. So I stink, by the way. Sorry. I do too. Great. So does the pod. I notice you're sweating through the jacket. Am I? Yeah, it's not pretty. It's hot as shit in here. It's very toasty. So, uh, and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sick, Jerry. I'm fiending. So uh, the guy goes, hey, after every we did all the shit, he was like, that was great. Can we get a photo with all the group staff? And I go, yeah, sure. With stage hands, they're all coming up on stage. We get a big photo, big theater. And uh, then he goes, ooh, hold on. You went over. We got to dock you. And I go, well, what, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, yeah, union rules, you know. Uh, you went, it's 11.02. You got to end at 11. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm done. We, you want to take a photo? That took five minutes. And he's like, well, you're, if you're on stage after 11, that's it. And I go, well, you asked to take a photo. We had to gather everybody up. That took eight minutes, you know. Uh, we could have been done. We would have out of here. And he's like, yeah, rules are rules. And I go, well, can you... Slip and slide a little bit. Can get, get me off the get, hook for old times. Sake. Yeah, and he's like, can't do it. Union, it's illegal. And I'm like, well, everything's illegal. You know, we're all on drugs. I'm drinking and driving. <laughs> and you're like, we're, we're all illegal. That guy's illegal. What a great defense. Your, your Honor, I mean, yeah, I was on. on drugs at the time. Yeah, I drank and drove here. What are we talking about? Everything's illegal. And uh, he was like, sorry. Just comes right out of the check. It's like 500 bucks. So you wow. just lose five hundred dollars for doing this. I stood on the stage. Yeah, it's tough. It's funny because you know I have always been and always will be pro I union. You're a I'm union a union. Queef. I'm a union queef, and uh, I'm an old school Democrat. Western Union. Boy, we used to have something, and they lost it with all the stuff about the <laughs> genders and the business. Sure, That's sure. The whole topic for another day, but. I'll, I'll always stick with the union. Great song, union made. Beautiful pun. You can't scare me. I'm sticking with the union. union but Pacific. you start doing these bigger shows, Radio City and whatever, 
And uh, these people just shut you down. They kick you out the beacon. They're like, get the fuck out of here. They'll throw yes, you out. Yes. They're just rude to you. They want you out. And uh, it's kind of, you're like, this is insane. It's wham, bam. You feel like a lady. You're like, oh, I just uh, I sold this out. We had a great time. Everybody's laughing. And now you're charging me. You're kicking me out the door. It's, it's where's, where's the love? Yeah, you're like, I'll... Fight for your right with everything I have, but this is a little... This is a little silly. A little, a little uncouth, frankly. Yes, yes, couth. But we had this with on 4th of July, which is now available, by the way, on Amazon and iTunes oh, and all the cool. stuff. I, I've got, more and more people are seeing it, which is so exciting. You don't have to go to Louie's website anymore. You can go to all the places I just... Wherever you watch movies. It I don't could know. be like a Swingers, where it picks up later. Maybe. I hope so. People have been very kind, so thanks to everyone who watched it. Please but we had a We had a similar thing about this, and maybe I told this story on here before... But it was sexy moment for our producer, Brady, who's one of my favorite people ever, who makes comedy specials. He's done all Rogan specials, and that's where Louie met him. Ah, and he produced our movie. Brady Bunch. But anyway, he was like a UFC guy and then a comedy special guy and then made our movie, and uh, he's the best. But anyways, we had a thing where it's all union, of course, and you have to take a lunch after a certain time. Yes, And yes. it was like, hey, we have to have lunch at 12... PM, whatever. Yeah. We're out at twelve o'clock. Oh yeah. And so we're pushing it and pushing it. Cause if you go over, you gotta pay everybody time and a half for that half an hour. Union. And so we finished and then Louie was like, Cut, what what time is it? And we're like, We did it, we did it, yeah. And all right, let's break for lunch. And there was one guy who was like, Hey, sorry. It's twelve oh one. And it was like a standoff between the the crew and the producers. Yeah. And uh, he was like, are you, are you really going to do this? It's 12.01. And half the crew was like, dude, come on. And he's like, yeah. I'm sorry. That's the rule. They stick to it. And the other guy, and it was funny because they're a union, but half the guys were like, come on, man. And then Stickers. Louis was like, by the way, if you in a film, if you go overtime, you get 30 minutes. So Louis's like, well, if I'm paying for 30 minutes... We're using it. Yes. We're going right. to keep working for 30 minutes. Good for him. So everyone's like, stop. it was hot and everyone's hungry. It's like, we can eat or you can work for another 30 minutes because we went 20 seconds over and whatever, we'll pay the overage. And then our producer like was like, are we really doing this? Are you kidding? And then one of the union guys was like, this is not the nature of the law, the rule. Yes. The yes, rule spirit of the law. is to be like, hey, what a... We, we can't have everyone working all day. Exactly. And thank God we have unions and it changed the country. And it, it's we work nine to five and you can't have children doing slave. It, it's it's the foundation of our nation yeah. is the union. <laughs> but you're like, what are we Fourth doing? Like, we're 30 seconds over and now everyone's going to, you need all this. Exactly. What the fuck are we doing? Like, what are we doing to ourselves? And we also had a debate because we're like, I don't think we were 12 seconds well, or whatever it is. There's a couple uh, different clocks in the room, so who the fuck knows? Right, but it was a real standoffy thing, and it I was like it. it was two sides just staring at each other, and uh, eventually everyone just kind of went back to lunch. But it does feel like you're like, what so, happened? Did you pay it, or did he get? Did no, he, no, we called it. You got away with it, even yeah. All right, but it we'll was see. legitimately like. 22 seconds. It's insane. And the problem is it's so robotic. They just go, that's how it is. And you go, but that's silly. Come on. And you wanted to take a photo. And he's like, that's how it is. Zero- we went from chummy, arm around the neck, hey, woo Phoenix, yeah, to you're fucked. Right. And then just stone cold nothing. And you're like, can we be human beings about this? Like, nah, that's it. And you're like, damn, all right. Right. That's the hard part. But thank God for you, because I've done a few film projects that weren't union, and you're like, I'm, this is uh, they, this uh, is goofy. It's got to be a middle yeah. ground. And, uh, and yeah, you know, also, like, so many great fucking things, especially with a, with a movie, you're like, you make a commercial or anything, and every time they, they cut it from a minute to 30 seconds, you're like, here's another $20,000. That's true. And you're like, that's pretty good. That's true. There are upsides, but it's just when they... Turn that knife right into your cunt. Mostly upsides, all upsides, but all that right. part's annoying. Upside down. Upside down. But it's um, just, it, it, and people go, eh, it's 500 bucks, look at this check, and you're like, I know, but just give me 500 bucks right now. How right. does that feel? I hate yeah. when they do that. They go, ah, it's 500 bucks, what do you care? And I'm like, okay, well, give it to me then. Well, again, by the way, somebody on your team should be on this. This is somebody else's fault. Why would you be conscious of this? Yes. The tour manager should be like, hey, hey, Mark, just a heads up. We have to be out here in eight minutes. Or it's going right. to cost you money. But what about these cum guzzlers who do the, uh, like, with, with the with the posters at the Gramercy? They go, hey, it's 30% uh, 
rake to the house with the posters, and you go, let me talk to him. And we got rid of the 30%. You're like, so what are these rules? Right. But yeah, that's yeah. not even union. That's, that's just, not union. That's just, just cunts. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chislers, we call them in the business. But now, hey, we'll be back there. Now, speaking of union jobs that I'm uh, grateful exist, but not in this instance, but in general I am, uh-huh. I'm driving, Democrats, I'm driving, <laughs> everything's switched, it's really crazy. It's really flippy floppy. We were the police people. Yes, and the no war, and the free speech. All flippy floppy, I'm sticking with this side, but boy, they're trying hard to lose me. But anyways, we're driving. <laughs> it ain't easy, kid. We're, we're driving back, Sarah and I went up for, speaking of this double union story, my uncle Doug, shout out Uncle Doug, he's never going to hear this, but... Dougie. Retired from the Stoughton Fire Department, 34 years of service. Wow. Just a few months after retiring from the Air Force, 42 years of service. Wow. That's something. That's lunch. And a plumber, which is also quite a service. Boy, he's got his hands at all these benefits. A lot of unions, a lot, uh, lot of service. He's laying pipe. So, uh, yeah, in the Air Force for years, had a big retirement party, which, you ever have this with your family? Mm. My family, I, this is more of a Boston thing. They go, hey, Uncle Doug's retiring from the Air Force. We're having a party around. It's uh, May 8th. And I go, uh, nah, I'm in Royal Oak, Michigan. Okay, no big deal. Yeah. And it turns out people flew in from Iraq. Uh. His son flew in to surprise him. He wore his dress blues, and he gave a big speech. He's, like, uh. crying. This is a man that's never shown emotion. He cried. He records everyone in the family, including me. Oh. Uh. People, a thousand people there. They rented a hall. They presented him a flag. A, oh. They sang America the Beautiful. And I'm over here at Dick's Joke Shop. Right. And I'm right. like, I would have fucking canceled you, idiots. Wow. Nobody said anything. I mean, how old is this guy? I don't know, 60. Okay. Jeez. I feel like he's getting out early. Well, when do you stop working? Well, you can get out early. That's what's great about cops and firemen and military. You can't have a 75 year old guy flying oh, yeah. airplanes. Well, they can run the country. Well, yeah, that's an easier job than a fireman. I guess so, yeah. But so he's reti- nobody told me. So this time now he's retiring from the fire department. I go, I don't come hell or high water. I'm going to this fucking party. You got God that damn. right. And to me, that's a bigger deal because I've re- I rode in the fire truck in the parade when I was a kid. Ooh, you know what I mean? I'm fun. like, he's a, to me, he's a fireman who's in the Air Force. Yeah. So I thought this was going to be the big party. But then they're like, this is a small one. He already had the big oh. party. Jeez. So I'm like, whatever. So anyways, we drive up there. It's a fun party. I get to see all these old firemen that I haven't seen in 20 years and family. And everyone's just, it's quite triggering because everyone you just want to get fucking hammered with everybody. Yeah. But do they do the Dalmatian? I think some people have Dalmatians. I, like, but, I miss uh, the Dalmatian. It's fun, but I think it's hard to have main. What do you have, a dog in the fucking firehouse? Well, it adds a little life. You throw the tennis ball, a bunch of guys cleaning the truck, blowing each other, making chili. I think the union won't allow it. <laughs> ah, you fucking 101 Cruella de Vil. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think some maybe have a dog, but uh, neither one of these departments have a dog. All right. But uh, it's also weird, too, because my uncle's old. And I went to see him. I, we brought the baby to the firehouse because he's taking a photo with every kid in the family. So it's uh, a tradition. What about the calendar? Is Doug in a calendar? No, no calendar. Uh, they right. play a hockey game. Cops okay. and firemen. That's something. Hoses yeah. versus something. noses. They go with the Jews. <laughs> Hoses versus Who are the cops? It's hose versus bros or something like that. Hose up, pips down. I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, so you go there, and then you meet a bunch of kids there. He's at the firehouse. I'm like, why are you retiring? What a fun job. And then you meet, everyone's 21 years old. It's a bunch of kids with pimples. Like, oh, hi, Mr. Doug. Oh, wow. So you're like, yeah, you got to get out of here. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, you've outgrown. So anyways, we go to the party. We have a great time. We get to see everybody, and it's fun. And he's retired. They give him a big framed axe and the whole thing. Hey, I love that. And my my cousin makes the collage. And I got misty eye because it's the collage with all of us kids on the fire truck through the years. And you realize, like, oh, my God. When you get older, you're like, here's your life. Yeah, hook and ladder. Here's this kid when he was six. Now he's 50. Here's this kid when he was three. Now he's a woman, whatever. Uh, sure. <laughs> but anyway, so no it's hose. great party. And then Monday, we're driving back, Sarah and I and the baby. They're in the back seat together. And uh, I'm up front jerking off. And I go from Rhode Island to Connecticut. We just got off the gas station, filled up with gas. I used the Shell gift card. There you Shout go, out Shell. To Nationwide. What's it called? Live Nation. Thank <laughs> you, Live Nation. Is on your side. So 
I get back on the highway. Now, Sarah has a podcast at 1 p.m. What time is it? It's about 11.15 or something like All that. Right. Or whatever. I don't know what time. No, maybe it's 10.15. We left late because the baby was sleeping or whatever. So I'm like, I got to get her home for a podcast, which is so funny because you're talking about all these jobs. I just left this guy who was an Air Force I know. fireman. And I'm like, Sarah's going to talk about lady stuff. Yeah, I do for a you microphone <laughs> for, yeah, for an hour. So I'm bobbing and weaving and really flying, and all of a sudden, I just see lights go on. Scoop, 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 oh, on a wow. big silver SUV. But at the same time, there was like an 18-wheeler pulling up, and this is an unmarked car ah. with lights on. And so, And it started pulling out when I was like... 800 yards back. That's the worst feeling. So I thought this was an escort for this big, not an 18-wheeler, but a big fucking... Um, like a wide load. A wide load. I see. On my shoulder blades. Yes. So I thought, oh, this is the wide load escort. You know how they have an escort that drives in front and behind? I get one for my wife. So I'm like, no, oh, how about that? That's interesting. And then this guy just whoosh, cruises up right on my tail. Oh, and I think really... Touch your tits right there on the buttocks. Now, this is an important time to mention. I am a safe driver. You've driven with me. I'm, Very safe. I'm 10 and 2, fucking 74 mile an hour cruise control. I don't get pulled over, baby. No, you don't. Know, cardigan. So Sarah's going, ah, he's not pulling you over. It's for the truck. And I'm go so I start to like pull over. She's like, no, no, it's not pulling over. I'm mm. like, okay, so maybe not. So I get back in the middle lane. Oh. He follows me in the middle lane. I'm like, I think I'm getting pulled over. She's like, I don't think so. Are we getting the, the woo, woo, woo? No woo, woo, and no pull over, you fucking piece of shit. Oh. I've seen your act. You're a hack. Right. Doesn't do any of that. It's just the lights. So finally, I'm like, I think I'm getting pulled over. But I'm also, he has a camouflage baseball hat on the center console. Mm. It's unmarked car and no nothing. So no, I'm like, yeah. is this a trick? Is he going to steal my baby and fuck me in the ass? Sure. The no like? signage. No, a lot of antennas is usually the giveaway. No antenna. This is just a fully unmarked car. And I'm like, what if this is a scam? Right. A camouflage hat. I'm like, who has a camouflage baseball hat? And anybody can buy a light. I can buy a light on Amazon in six minutes. A beacon. Good theater. <laughs> is that what that's called? A little Is that a beacon? Oh, oh yeah. I never do that. Oh yeah. yeah, with the magnet, you toss it on there. That's more old school. We call them the rollers. They gave you put on the rollers. Yeah. Shit. What rollers? No. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, that's a line from Blues Brothers. I see. Anyways, uh, so he pulls me over. I pull over finally. The rumble strip. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We got the baby in the back. I pull over, and... It's very real, being pulled out. You're like, oh, this is happening. Yeah, it's a whole thing. And so, you know, I, I grew up with cops and firemen, so I know the deal. I go I go hazards. I turn the car off. I put the key on the dashboard. Oh, the key dash. That's big. I go, I go key on the dashboard, car's off, hazards on, 10 and 2. And I don't even get the license out yet because then it looks like you're fishing around. Right, right. Because so, some people go, let me get my license and my glove button. And I'm like, now you're reaching around. You're going in your pockets. Hands. No good. And Hands. now this is going to be controversial, and I don't want it to be. So I want to just preface people are going to get triggered by this. Okay, okay. I'm sensing a racial uh, idea coming on. 100%. All right. So I understand the history of police and black people. Sure. And it's complicated, and it's not always pretty. You got that right. It's often unpretty. Oh, yeah. And you hear all these folks say, you don't understand what it's like to get pulled over as a black person. And I don't. But I want to say this. I am also shitting my pants. Of course. When I am pulled over by a police officer. Same. Probably a different way, and there's much more history and all that stuff. Yes, yes. But it's not like... A white person gets pulled over, and they're like, Woo! Hey, what's up I there, know. you fat ass? Right, I'm right. also like, oh my God, this man can do anything he fucking yes, wants. Yes, yes. He can beat me and shoot me and tase me, and no. then because of the union, just get away with it. Right, union. So I'm like, yeah, I'm also like, So yes, I, that's yes. all I'm saying. You're not going to go, hey, you piggy bitch. Yeah, I'm not trying to say anything Let me except... Play with your gun. I am also terrified of the police in an instant where I'm getting pulled over. You don't want to go to jail, and he might have seen your act. Now, that being said, I understand as a white man, I'm, more, I'm much more apt to call the police, grab a cop, and go, hey, mister. Sure. Whereas as opposed to a black person might be like, I ain't calling the cops on nothing because they'll shoot me. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure he's a honky as well. 
Oh, yeah. Fellow honk. Big time. Big honk. I'll give you a horny. So he comes up, and nowadays, when I was a kid, they came up to the driver's side because you had to crank the window down. Yes, yes. But they kept getting hit by cars. I got a bit about that in my first album. So he comes to this side because you got the automatic phone, whatever the fuck, rolling down the window. Yes, yes. <laughs> And he comes up. I'm terrified. And I, first of all, I'm like, sorry, I didn't realize you were pulling me over. I thought you were with the truck. And he just goes, yeah, no. Yeah. And I'm like, this. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm all 10 and 2. But I feel like with the baby, the wife, the, the car seat, you look like an upstanding citizen. The glasses, the, the hair. And I am that. Yes. And, and you're sober. And I'm sober, and I, 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 I you know, I'm a, I'm a blue collar guy. Of there course. you go. Well, you just came from a fucking firehouse. That's what I wanted to say. And I have a PBA car. Oh, good beer. Which I thought about busting it out. You got to bust. Well, I'm afraid I'm gonna be like Buscemi in Fargo, right. and he's like, "What's that, sir?" Yeah, yeah. Thought we could take care of this here in Brainerd. So it's, I'm like, "It's like Kramer with the uh, Kramer says discount." <laughs> like, what the fuck does that mean? Kramer. <laughs> yeah, I'm mentioning his name, and right. then I got Tuesday Dave Stewart, who's a, a mass state trooper, mm. and he thought about being like, "Well, I'm just driving home from uh, my uncle's retirement party. Saw our old trooper Stewart up there," but. I would like to be treated the way everyone else is treated, ah, you know. Of the people. So he just says, uh, hey, sir, I got you doing 84 to 65. Ooh, that's almost 20 over, fam. Yeah, that's not pretty. And I go, oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. And he goes, let me get your license. And they don't ask for the registration anymore. I think Good. it's all computers. I don't have it. So I go, there's my license. And he goes, I'll get you out of here. And, and this is, I don't know if this is white or just the face and the baby or what. But uh, he goes, what are you heading home? Because I had the mass, I have a Massachusetts license, New York plates. Got it. He goes, What are you heading home? I go, Yeah, heading home. And he goes, uh, All right, I'll get you out of here quick. Okay. I go, Great. So he goes back there. Now, this is the moment you're like, Have I paid all my tickets? Yes, Has he seen yes. my, my search history? Am oh, I going to get my shot? God. The herpes, the Louie movie. Who knows? So, <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes score. He could oh, throw me right in the clink. Yeah, that's worth some jail time alone. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and uh, Sarah and the baby are back there. And now, now that I've met him, it seems okay. I'm just kind of chilling. And uh, he comes back, and he goes, uh, all right, well, here's the ticket. He goes, I put you down for 75. He, uh, he's like, I had you at 84. Much cheaper ticket. And I uh, just want to get you out of here. And uh, he goes, uh, you can pay it here. You can fight it. You can plead uh, innocent. Or he's like, or you can just uh, pay it here. And I said, I'll, I'll pay it right away, sir. I apologize. And uh, he goes, all right, well, the license is in the envelope. And I said, hey, thank you for your service. I appreciate you. Hey, How about well that? done. Well done. You comply. I did, I comply and I blow. And yes. His name was McElroy. And I wanted to be like, hello, my favorite, my uh, my fellow small dick. <laughs> yes, yes. New Englander. Irish curse. McElroy. I like that. Yeah. So he said, all right, have a good one. I said, you too, sir. I went home, just went right online, pay that ticket. You got to knock it out. It's not pretty, by the way. Three. 228. Yeah, yeah, but it would have yeah, yeah. been three whatever. You got that right. McElroy, not a baby. But boy, was I happy to be a good old-fashioned white with glasses. Yeah, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> he knocked some ticket right off, and I still kind of think, like, should I call a couple favors in? Because I got some pretty high-up firemen, uh, military sure. cop buddies. Well I was going to ask why you didn't use your PBA card that was sent to us by the cop. Well, that's what I said. I had it, but it just feels too... But you can't bring this up to Dougie Fresh because he's going to go, Whoa, you didn't call me, you chooch. McElroy fucked me in the ass in 88. I went to his bachelor party. We, we railed a donkey. I know that guy. I know, but the thing is, I try, I'm try. i breaking the law. I'm yeah, driving too yeah. fast. I have the money, and you save those favors. Yeah, you got that right. Because who knows? I might kill a, a gay hobo at some point if God I see willing. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, and two twenty, you can afford it, and you were speeding. So I think this is a fair exchange. You broke the law. You got a ticket. It was quick. It was painless. You pay it. You're good to go. And he hooked me up. By by the way, one time I don't want to say who, just in case they get in trouble. Although they are retired now, so it doesn't matter. But one time I got a U-turn ticket. Mm -hmm. I did a legal U-turn. Had to go and see the uh, the court, whatever. And uh, they were like, just just file uh, innocent. And you go to see a guy. And I had the old. The old uncle in the back with his oh. uniform on. He just stood there. The guy was like, all right, well, be careful in the future. And you're there like, you I go. will do. Thank you. Yeah. But good on you for paying it uh, toot sweet because that was a real lesson as a kid. 16 years old, driving dad's car, got a parking ticket. My dad's like, 25 bucks. 
this is, you know, the 90s. 25 bucks, you got to pay it. I was like, I'll pay it, I'll pay it. He goes, all right, it doubles if you don't pay it in a month. Of course, didn't pay it. 50 bucks. For a 60-year-old kid, 50 bucks is a lot of scratch. Of course. And it went up to like 150 because I just kept forgetting, and I, boy, I learned my lesson. Yeah, you got to just knock it out. And uh, But it was really something. Then it's hard because you're like, you want to be like, hey, I'm driving like that to get you home for your podcast. So how about a little handy on the ride? A little roadhead. You know, <laughs> something. Yeah. Well, did she make it? Because now you got to go 14 miles an hour. She did make it. Well, I did have that thought. Because, Well, by the way, this is the other thing, and I had a joke about this, too. It's easier to speed now because the cars are so much better. I know. They're quiet. Exactly. I had a bit about this. Like, I'm used to driving a car that shakes when you get to 65. Right. Like, now you drive a car, 85 doesn't feel like anything. No. It went went from Michael J. Fox to Fonzie. Exactly. When I was driving in my 87 Buick Century, it would literally be like, and you're like, geez, I got to slow down. This is nuts. Oh, yeah. You felt it, and the shit was shaking. But now a car can do... 90, and you're not really feeling it. And that's kind of how fast people are driving often. Yes, yes. And I do, and these roads are smooth out there in New England. I do think we should up the speed limit a little because the cars are better. Let's get it up there. Many places have, but 95 in Connecticut is still a two lane winding. Ah, it's a little dangerous. It's windy, okay. And, uh, but like, because out in Arizona, it is like you'll have like an 85 mile an hour speed limit. You got that one. Right? We're doing 93. Right. But it is. Hard because I'm like, if you drive 65 miles an hour on the highway, people will fucking throw shit. Oh at you. yeah, you're a you're a slow bitch. Yeah, they'll be they'll be you know throwing cum in your face. Oh yeah, the they will like... flash the lights. They'll do the toot. They get right up on your bump. It's pretty uh, intimidating. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, get the ticket and uh, that's it. There you go. Paid it. At least you can pay that shit online. You used to have to get a stamp, put it in the envelope. Go blow your guy or the whole thing. Yeah. I feel like he pulled over. Like it's meaning a quota. They got to get a quota. He's like good enough. He's going fast enough. And uh, they're just like, all right, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I was worried he's going to do a whole, you got a baby back here. You can oh. kill the baby, the whole thing. Where are you at on the baby on board? I never got that. Like I wasn't going to hit you or I was going to hit you. And then I see the baby on board. Now I'm going to take it easy on you. Yeah, I don't really get it. But I think maybe the baby on board is to signify that's why I'm driving slow. Oh uh, yeah. I drive slow because the baby, but even that, it's like, what, what are you gonna do? Drive. I drove sixty six because I had a baby, so that way when the truck hit me, the baby was fine. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, maybe it's a psychological thing. Like you absorb it and you don't even know it, but subconsciously you're like a little safer. You know, that, it's weird how the the mind works. You know, in a high school, if the kids wear uniforms, fighting goes down forty percent. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. This weird little. You know, it's a it it. It keeps you in line. Does the fucking go down? Or Probably. Up? I bet it goes down. Well, maybe the fighting goes down because you, you, you're, you, you're, you're in a shirt. You're wearing an Iron Maiden shirt, and this guy's wearing a, oh, a Biggie Small. You yes. like Iron Maiden? Yes, individual. Yeah. What are you got? You're wearing a hip-hop shirt, you piece of shit? Right. Maybe. Maybe. If we could only get our skin the same color. Plus the... Uh, that would be ideal. Plus the gang colors. Ah, the red and the you're blue. You're wearing red? We're supposed to be blue. Crips and Bloods. Oh, boy. Bleep that. Uh Uh-oh. All right. But, yeah, so maybe with the baby on board, it it, it hits the subconch. Where are we at? Oh, okay. We got to wrap up because we got to do a bonus, and I'm shooting a film right here in uh, Tuesday's studios. Yeah, boy, you're like Polanski. You're always shooting. I'm shooting heroin if I uh, have my work. We got some fun people showing up. and Oh, I stink. Yeah, I don't. Shit. I'm wearing the coat to cover the stink. That's what homeless people do. Uh, well, call me a hobo, Charlie, because this is not pretty. No, this is bad. Now, I have a, a, a friend who will once again remain nameless. Please. But she claims she's never worn deodorant, and so as a result, she doesn't stink. I've heard this from people. This is a thing. They, yeah. they Your body never got stinky because... It never was covered up or something weird. There's like a cycle to it. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Chuck's saying no. It doesn't make any sense to me. But <laughs> now I will say I got my schnoz right in there, and it was like a daisy. There you go. Well, it's kind of like Purell. You mm. start using Purell, then you need Purell. That's why I never use Purell. I don't either. I don't, I don't trust it. it. I don't really wash people. my hands either. I do a meet and greet. I shake 900 hands. I finger my wife. I, I wipe my ass, and I sniff my shit. I'm all right. I'm the same way. Not Never get sick. Yeah, Sam yeah you real... get sick all the time, actually. Ah, I don't get any sleep. I mean, 
You you also talk about how you got COVID six times. Uh, three. <laughs> so, but yeah, I did the road. But um, yeah, I mean, I I'm the same way, and it's never it's just never on my mind. Which, by the way, I, people think I'm the complete reverse. <laughs> yeah. People are like this germaphobe maniac. I'm like, I haven't washed my hands since 1988. I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what's the comedy store date? You said you were sick earlier today. No, no I'm just uh, on no sleep. No uh, sick. Um, no sick. You said sick. Did I say sick? You did. You said you were sick. Oh, well, I'm you sick did. In the you head. said you're Ted Danson. Uh, <laughs> May fifth, right? Yeah, I think it's the fifth. Four Sunday p.m. The 5th, Best it's time sell slot. Out. You're gonna love it. We got insane lineup too. Ooh, ah. We got we got a big guy and a little. Girl, yeah, yeah, and another well, guy. I thought we're gonna get another guy in there. Let's get another guy we in can't there. Can't have two girls, that's for sure. Oh, we don't have a cup. Oh, we're trying to get laughs here. Um, but and then May second, of course, the Thursday, I am at the Regent Theater, and that's gonna be hot. Ooh, 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 Special ooh, ooh, guy. I got two girls on that show, ish. and Monus, 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 and uh, <laughs> Chuck's rolling his eyes. I don't even know what that means. What is oh, that? Good. I got oh, a lady okay. on my show as well. Nothing I'm at to the, do with that. I'm at the Multibon Theater in L.A. But uh, I'm also going to Indianapolis, uh, Pittsburgh Improv this weekend. and uh, Nice. That's a fun Mindful room. Metal Jacket. I got a bunch of stuff on YouTube, of course. I don't know. Punch Up Live. Go to punchuplive.com. The, the link is in the... <laughs> yeah, I texted you. I was like, is this good? Yeah, I texted you back. No, you didn't. Did I not hit send? No, I guess not. I was like, uh, all right, I th- oh. I'm sure it was fine. I, I mean, was wondering why you didn't write back. I've had this twice. I got baby brain now. Same yeah, with you, me, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an right. epidemic. No big deal. No big deal. I'm, I have, I'm having so many baby bra- I'm leaving without my keys. I'm not uh, hitting send on texts. You're foggy. It happens. It's the worst. It's happened twice because you guys are both good at writing back. And so yeah. both times I was like, what happened there? Yeah. It's in. All right, no big deal. Signed, sealed, delivered. Having all a baby right. sucks. I'm all over the road as well. Uh, Tennessee, I can't move a goddamn ticket to save my dick. So come on out in Tennessee. Chattanooga, Knoxville, Memphis, the whole thing. Little Rock, Albuquerque. We're all over God's green earth. MarkNormanComedy.com. Go to Punch Up. I'll have a story up about it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in L.A. Chuck. Hey, check out my podcast, Fun Bearable, uh, funbearablepod.com. I'm not sure what's up this week, but we're having some fun stuff. Doug Key's going to be on for our live show, which is uh, going to come out really soon on our feed. And Joy, I wanted to say, the PBA card thing. I went out to dinner with a New York cop, mm-hmm. and I asked her, I'm like, hey, I got a PBA card. I'm really uncomfortable with actually pulling it out when I get stopped. What do you think about it? She goes, happens constantly. Don't feel weird about it. Just hand it over with your license. It happens all the time. Damn. So I was like, okay. Well, I still, though, it feels weird to be like, um, I can drive this fast. That's that's what I, <laughs> yes, I, yes. what I said to her. She goes, no. She's like, it's totally normal. She's like, just hand it with your license. Don't even say anything about it. Feels like you're greasing wow. them. Like, here you go. Between us. She, she, I, I had the exact same feelings, and she told me it was totally cool. Wow. That's all I'm saying, buddy. Okay. I think you're good. All right. Next time. Well, yeah. I've had it happened once in 25 years, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. we'll see. Uh, all right. Be nice. Sweep it up. Praise Allah. Thank you, gang. No one wants to be themselves.